Well, DJI is out here just reinventing the wheel when it comes to cameras. We now have the DJI Pocket 3. All right, guys, so the Sony ZV-1 II is your standard traditional type of vlogging camera. This thing is kind of a staple. While I review this camera, I'm really gonna put it up against the Sony ZV-1 II because these are in similar price points and they have the same sensor size, which is crazy because when you look at these two cameras, I think a lot of people are gonna think that you're gonna get more image quality out of this, but uh, it's not that simple. So let's get into it. Ability and just the way that you use it. The biggest difference between these two cameras is having to rig them out. When it comes to the ZV-1 II, you're gonna need a cage just to have separate different mounting points. That's been one of my secret off-roading spots, but I'm gonna rig the camera right onto here. Now, if I was just using the ZV-1, I would probably put a cage on this. You have to figure out a way to mount NDs and all that kind of stuff to this. Where on here, the NDs aren't available yet, but we'll have magnetic VNDs that we can slap on here, but I could simply just pair this to the bottom here. And then from there, I could just go back in my car and from the app, I can adjust the gimbal and adjust my shot. I can flip it, I can put on the wireless mic and you don't have to like buy any extra stuff as long as you get the combo pack. So I just have the camera mounted directly in front of me and look how sick it is to have a gimbal on a little wireless camera here, basically. I can move this around. I can go wherever I want to with this and just reposition again. It's like having like a second pair of hands with you. You see the framing looks decent, but I want just a little bit more width on there. So I'm just gonna slap the magnetic wide angle lens on there. Sorry if you guys hear Sedona <laughs> breathing heavily back there. So I love that I could just mount the camera up and use my phone and just readjust my angle here. Oh, I love this camera. <laughs> Guys, just having a gimbal just makes life so much easier. Uh, the lens on this is a 20 millimeter, which is uh, my favorite focal length. When I'm shooting on like a bigger camera and I'm doing any type of vlogging or, you know, documenting like whatever I'm doing, I usually have the camera on 20 to 40 millimeter. And uh, it's usually just at its widest focal length at 20 millimeters. If you want to get the same type of function out of this camera, you have to get a separate gimbal and then you have to use different apps and it's just, it becomes a big debacle. You just get this one simple case you have a wide angle lens you have a diffusion filter if you want that in there and that's it that's all you have to bring with you you don't have to bring a giant camera bag full of stuff but i think the more important thing that comes with the creator combo is going to be this wireless mic now let's get into this when it comes to the sony zv12 the onboard mic was one of my favorite things because you can use it but you have to go in post and you have to kind of like edit it and if you're good at that like you'll you'll be fine but if you're someone that's not super good at like editing audio you're better off at getting a shotgun mic or like a wireless mic setup. Once you throw a shotgun mic on here, you can see it's just gonna add so much more size and it's gonna make it a little bit more noticeable. If you're like in public, you don't want people looking at you. This kind of gives away that you're making content here. Or usually what I do is I put my uh, DJI wireless mics. You put the receiver on the camera, then you put the transmitter on you and you gotta put a cable to it. So there's a lot of extra pieces that you have to get compared to. The combo pack with the Pocket 3, it comes with the mic and the mic, you simply just turn it on and it automatically connects to the camera and it just does everything for you. Like you don't have to do anything else. All right guys, my audio solution for this tank just goes to show what camera's easier to use. Instead of me having to set up all this stuff for the Sony ZV-1, Two, I just simply turn on the wireless mic for the uh, Pocket 3 and I don't have to set up anything, it just works. So, the thing I want to talk about on this is say if I'm going to go out and I'm trying to do like document myself taking photos of the iconic dinosaurs here near Palm Springs, I'm going to have to keep coming over to the ZV-1 to adjust it where, where the Pocket 3 is just going to track me wherever I go. Now, let's get into the active track. Some Sony cameras do have the auto reframing, but basically what that does, it's going to go in and just crop into the image and it's digitally doing it. And still, if you go outside of the limits of it, it's not going to track you versus a gimbal just being able to follow you wherever you go. There's so many people out here right now that probably think I look like a lunatic, but let's just see, like that's so dope that it just tracks me wherever I go. It makes life so much more easier. Crazy part is these have the same size sensor. Crazy part is these have the same size sensor. They both have a one inch sensor. All right guys, obviously you can just use the standard color mode on both of these cameras and they're both gonna look fine. But if you're someone that likes a little bit more advanced features and you wanna get a flatter image, so you can use your own LUTs or buy LUTs, you can find my LUTs in the description. I'll make LUTs for this and I have a bunch of S-Log3 LUTs. But in order to get a log image out of the Sony ZV-1 II, you're gonna have to go into its more advanced 
menu. You have to go into menu, picture profiles, change to S-Log3, change your uh, color gamut to S-Log3 Sin, and then you're good to go. But the issue with that is it puts your ISO to 1000. It does have an internal three stop ND, but that's only gonna get you so far, especially if you're in hard light like this. You're gonna need more ND, so you gotta buy the little sticker, little step up ring thing to put on here, give the ND, it's a whole debacle. On the Pocket 3, and they make your life way more easier. You just simply swipe left, go to your color mode, change it to D log M, and this is in 10 bit color. That's it. Like it was literally that easy. From there, you just slap on your LUT and do whatever you need from there. So that's the big difference between these two cameras is this is still like a traditional type camera from Sony to where on here, this is dedicated for creators. It just simplifies it, doesn't bake in all these other features. And the biggest and most important difference between these two, this only shoots 8 bit video this shoots 10 bit. So if you're anyone that likes using LUTs, whether you're more advanced or you're just buying LUTs off the internet, I sell some LUTs, uh, I'll try to make some LUTs for this. Having 8 bit footage, it's gonna fall apart. You're gonna have banding in the sky, your skin tones are gonna start falling apart. You'll be like, why does my footage look so bad? When it comes to 10 bit, you're gonna be in the safe zone. You slap on any LUT, you can push the heck out of it and it's gonna hold pretty well. All right guys, I'm here on set so I can't speak too loud, but one cool thing is we have a dedicated low light mode on this. Pretty much does everything you need and it just, it's gonna boost for your best performance. So I'm just doing a comparison on these two. I set both to 6400 ISO and we're at 150 the shutter. One thing that I've noticed already off the bat when using the Pocket 3 in low light mode is it keeps all its sharpness in there, which I don't know how it's doing, but when you have to go and do noise reduction and post on the Sony CV-1 2, you're gonna lose some of that sharpness. You lose some color fidelity and everything. Somehow DJI's allowing you to keep all that on there. And again, guys, you can see from the back of the menu how simple and easy this is to use. If you're to dive into the Sony menus to do this, you're gonna get overwhelmed. That's probably the number one gripe that I think a lot of people have is when they get into a camera system like this, they get overwhelmed and intimidated because when they go on the menus, it's like reading a different language almost. So when you pick up this thing, it all kind of makes sense. So as you guys can see, if you're someone looking at Sony ZV-1 2, but you're kind of overwhelmed and you just want something that you can just flip open and start recording this thing's made exactly for that this thing is made to be like kind of a do-it-all kind of thing and it still gives you all the professional menus and there's a lot of little quirks and it's 8-bit footage this thing's 10-bit and it just works it's just going to track you it's going to bounce all your footage out nothing's worse than you when you go watch a video and it's just jumpy and jittery and you can't really tell what's going on and you just want to turn it off all right guys that's it i'm going to go off-roading tomorrow and use this more that's it peace What the f like, uh, Why don't you lean against the Bronco right here? No other way. I mean, you could if you want that.